Hi class. So uh, welcome to Friday and um, we are going to continue our uh, the project that we were working on on Wednesday uh, which involves the um, National Park boundary. Sorry. <laughs> I've been up since like uh, 2.30 in the morning. You ever have one of those nights where you just wake up and you just can't go to sleep? So I am running on empty, but let's do this. So we were talking about um, uh, the, uh, the problem that we wanted to do, we wanted to solve is we wanted to calculate how many national parks are there in each state. And then we wanted to display that on a map. So let's see, we were, uh, to the point where I opened up the project from last time and uh, here's the map that we were working on last time where we got these two data layers we got the uh, layer for the United States uh, state boundaries and a layer that has just national parks national park boundaries and so one thing we'll notice is some of these parks uh, Smoky Mountains is fine. Here, let's do them in the Yellowstone. So let's make um, this a little bit. Oh. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. Clear selection. Um, here, zoom in. So Yellowstone. This is Yellowstone National Park, and and Yellowstone is actually in three different states. Um, most of it's in Wyoming, but part of it is in Montana, and part of it is in Idaho. Uh, over here, this part's in Idaho. So you got this part in Montana, and all of this in Wyoming. So uh, based on our um, based on our goal of counting how many national parks are in each of these states, uh, what we will find is that uh, Yellowstone counts for th a park in three states. So Yellowstone will be counted three times. Okay. So what tool can we use to uh, to determine uh, how many parks? are in each state. And the tool we're going to use is spatial join. <clears throat> okay. So what we're going to do is um, if we look at this, let's look at the spatial join uh, tool. So I got it up here. It's in the toolbox. You can search for it in geoprocessing, but there's a link to it up here. A button for it up here in the toolbar under analysis spatial join so it's a pretty useful tool and if we look at the um, the the options that we can specify for performing a spatial spatial join uh, the first thing we got to pick is a target feature so in this case um, ultimately what we're trying to do is count how many national parks are in the uh, uh, in each state. So our target feature is going to be the states. So that would be US state boundaries. And to that we're going to join the features in the national parks. And then our output, uh, this is going to create an output feature class. And let's call it uh, national parks in states. Okay. Uh, we're going to join one to one. Uh, we'll keep all the features in the target. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that we don't need. And our match is going to be uh, option is whether or not the things in the join intersect the targets. And our search radius 
we'll just leave that blank. Uh, you could put in there that you know you maybe you want to have a little buffer around each of your target polygons, each of the states in this case. But we're going to leave that blank. And then down here in the fields, what I'm going to do is let's see. Let's let's close this for a second. Um, before we continue with this, um, the, um, the the result of this analysis is going to be um, a number. It's going to be a count. And that count is going to correspond to how many national parks are in each state. So we're going to need a place to store that count in our in our result and um, the way that I'm going to do this here is I'm going to create a new field in my target which is the states layer and that target is going to be called that field is going to be called national park counts okay so let's do that so that's down here so I'll open up this attribute table and I'm going to add a field I know there's lots of stuff in here that we don't need, but I'm going to call this NP count for national park count. And the data type here is going to be, um, well, I'll keep it a long. Um, longs are integer type numbers, so they can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. And uh, it's Formatting, let's just make it a numerical format. Decimal places, we don't need any decimal places. Uh, okay. All right, so I've created a new field. Let me save this up here. And we should see it then if I close this and scroll all the way to the right of the attribute table here. NP count. So this is a, a, a column that's going to store how the a number which corresponds to how many national parks are in each of our states and there's nothing there right now it's just null okay so I'll come back here now and uh, my target feature is the US states I'm gonna join the national parks uh, layer to it I gave a name to my output feature class and uh, I'm interested where the join features intersect my targets, the states. And then down here in the fields, what I'm going to do is I am going to specify, if I can find it, let's refresh this. Looking for the looking for the field I just created. I'm looking for the field I just created. Here, let me, maybe it hasn't refreshed. Let me open the tool again. Oh, there it is, NP count. Okay, so this is the field I created um, that's empty right now. Uh, but I want this output field, so I select it here. And I can specify what merge rule I want. So um, what I want to do here is I don't want to just take the first element that appears in the uh, join feature and put it in here. What I want to do is I actually want to count something that's in the join features. So I'm going to count, uh, and then I'm going to delete this because it's in the different. The source is national parks only boundaries, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to count uh, park names. Okay, and let's do this. Okay, so um, the way this will work is uh, if we look at uh, let's look at uh, 
Wyoming. So in Wyoming, we have two national parks, Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks. Okay, so in the parks, national parks only boundaries uh, layer, um, there are two features that are going to be joined to my target feature. And what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to put in the NP count column of the output a count of how many unique park names occur in my join feature uh, data set. Um, so what I should get is a two in that column for the state of Wyoming. Let's run this and see what happens. It says fail, okay. So this has happened to me before. Um, global ID one, for some reason, some of these fields are like in here even though they don't exist. Uh, I'm going to delete some of these at the bottom. All right, let's run it again. So it can't put them in the output because they don't exist. Okay, it worked. So let me pull this down here, make this one uh, invisible. So now um, let's click on Wyoming and look at its attributes. Select. Okay, so if we look at the, uh, well, let's do it this way. Uh, let's look at the attribute table and uh, close that. And then, so I have Wyoming selected. If I come down here and click this button right here, it's just gonna show the row that corresponds to that selected polygon. So it's Wyoming. Uh, and if I scroll over somewhere, We'll see, there it is, NP count. Uh, there it is, NP count, and you see the number in there is two, two. So it, it counted two because there are two national parks in Yellowstone. And it counted those up um, and put them into the um, output target um, uh, feature. Okay, so what we've what we accomplish here is um, with with the spatial join is we can use some aspect of the facial or uh, spatial spatial aspect of of our data to um, in to to add or enrich um, another data set. Uh, so in this case, we're looking to see, you know, where our, um, our features, which are the national parks, intersect the features, which are our states. And we created an output field in our, um, uh, in our target, which is the states, that would then count up how many unique national parks. So it's counting up the unique park names in the uh, national parks layer and putting that number in, the, in that column of the output. Uh, let's let's explore a little bit more and see if this works elsewhere. So let's see. So Montana, Montana has, uh, this is Glacier National Park right here. And, uh, and then Yellowstone. So Montana should have a two in its uh, count column too. Oh, it's got three. What am I missing? There's gotta be, oh, right there. <laughs> There's a little national park. What is that? Nez Pierce National Park historical park. I had no idea that even existed. Okay. Little itty bitty teeny tiny thing. So Montana's got three national parks. Nez Pierce, Glacier, and uh, Yellowstone. Okay. 
Um, okay, so if you guys have any questions, stop me. Uh, I think um, you guys, if you work through, if you work through the activities in chapter three of the textbook, uh, you'll you'll do this operation in that textbook. They they do a spatial join on. Um, what is the data? It's obesity data and food islands. Uh, so they're counting up the number of food islands in the various counties of Illinois, I think, Michigan, one of those states in the Midwest. Um, and uh, the more repetitions you get using these, uh, these tools, uh, the more comfortable you'll be. So work through that if you get a chance. All right, so the next thing I want to do is, well, now I want to, uh, I want to visualize this. I want to visualize um, our counts of the number of national parks in each state. And the way I'm going to do that is um, I'm going to create labels, labels that appear on each of the states, and that label's value is going to correspond to the value in this column called NP counts that we created and populated with the spatial join. Okay, so let's close this, close some of this stuff, and let's turn off the National Parks boundary. I'll pull that down a little bit lower. And um, in this, uh, in the National Parks in the States layer that we created with, from the spatial join, I'm going to go to Label Properties, and the field I want to label let me delete this. The field I want to be the label is NP count. Here it is. And let's make it a little bigger. Okay. And I got to right click and turn on the label, and there we go. Um, that's a little too big. Check that out. That's pretty cool. So um, the number you see is uh, superimposed on each state is the number of national parks or national historical parks in that state. Um, so which state has the most parks? Well, let's look at uh, Alaska's got nine. How many has Hawaii got? Hawaii's got four. California's got 10. California wins. And it looks like uh, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Georgia, uh, Alabama, uh, Wisconsin, Iowa, Oklahoma, uh, Kansas, and Nebraska have zero national parks. Well, we should probably remedy that. I think they need a national park. Um, <clears throat> and so, the the way that we've done things here is um, is is res has resulted in these states that have no national parks. There's just nothing labeled there. Uh, so it would be nice if we could replace that no label with a um, uh, a a number. Okay. So there's a couple of ways we could do that. We could go into the attribute table. And uh, we could find them. You know, we could well let's, we could like select these states. Uh, I'm gonna hold down the shift key, and I'm gonna select these states. Yeah, I think I got them all. Mm -hmm. 
Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Alabama, Connecticut, Georgia, Rhode Island, Wisconsin. And then I could come in here and I could actually uh, put I should have deleted all this other stuff we don't need. Put zeros in here. I could put zeros in here and that would fix that. Um, is there a better way to do this? Um, well, I could do um, go to this column. If I After I have these selected, another way I could select them is I could do select by attributes and uh, selection type new selection, add expression. So I could select where, um, I think this will work, is equal to uh, null. Uh, there, is null, apply. And it selects those states where there's np count that's nothing. There's nothing in there, it's null. Uh, and then what I can do is, uh, this is kind of cool. Um, So I can go to this column and I can go to, um, I can, let me calculate this field. And uh, I can calculate this field. Let's make this window bigger. And I could say, you know, this equals zero. Uh, and then just hit apply. Look at that, it fills them all in. So I could calculate this column and just say it's all these are all equal to zero, and now all the zeros are there. Isn't GIS amazing? <laughs> uh, clear all the selections. Okay, so now I've I've completed my project. I've uh, I've started with a problem that I wanted to solve, and I thought about, you know, what kind of data am I going to need to solve this problem, and I went out and got that data. Uh, one data set was polygons for the geometry of the states. And yeah, there's a lot of other information in that data set as well that we didn't use. And then the other data set were uh, polygons for uh, land that's administered by the National Park Service. And uh, we filtered that down to focus just on national parks or national historical parks. And then we performed the spatial join uh, to join that data, the national parks and national historical parts, to our target, which was the states. And when we did the join, we populated a field which uh, would give us the count of unique park names inside each of our state polygons. And then we did some visualization and cleaning up. We got a cool map. All right. Um, so here is so that the tool we use is spatial join. All right. Um, let me pose a new problem for you, and we'll start thinking about this one. So here, here's a problem. Um, the uh, well, let me let me show you some data first. Uh, let's um, blank that layer, uh, bring the U.S. states to the top, all right, our state borders, and hmm, let's, let's add a folder connection because I got another data set in here. Uh, If I can remember where I put it, remember where I put it, here it is. So I got this data set from the Forest Service. Let me put it out here and we'll, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, and let's turn the national parks back on. And we'll leave the national parks off. We'll just focus. So what we're looking at here, let's zoom in here and click on some of these. Let's look at the attributes. So uh, this is Nez Pierce Clearwater National Forest. And this is Bitterroot National Forest. And this is Salmon, uh, Salmon 
Chalice National Forest. And this is Custer Gallatin National Forest. So what do I have? Shoshone National Forest. National Forests. Um, so this data layer is a polygon showing the border of all of our national forests. All the forest lands administered by the National Forest uh, Service. Uh, here's George Washington and Monongahela. Here's George Washington and here's Monongahela National Forest. Uh, I can't remember what this is called. Allegheny? Yes, Allegheny National Forest. Okay, so um, we could do something similar uh, to what we did. We could be like, um, how many national forests are there in each state? Um, but, uh, you know, there's, there's another dimension to national forests and national parks, which is probably more important, and that's the area. You know, some national forests are tiny, and some national forests are, like, bigger than some states, uh, especially out west. So, um, a, a question that someone might want to answer is, well, what's the total area of national forests in each of the states? All right. Um, the best tool for answering a question like that is, well, there's there's a couple of different workflows you could you could go through to answer that question. Everything from uh, you know splitting the national parks, national forests at using the state borders, um, and then uh, counting up the polygons that are within each of the states. Um, but uh, probably, I think the easiest way to do this would be to use a tool uh, called Summarize Within. Summarize Within. So that's one of these tools up. Go to Analyze. It's another one of these tools. Yeah, it's right there. Summarize Within. Okay. And you read the description here. It says, overlays a polygon layer with another layer to summarize the number of points, lengths of lines, or area of the polygons within each polygon, and calculates attribute field statistics about those features within the polygon. Ugh, easier said than... Uh, that's uh, <laughs> a lot to digest. Um, but what this is going to do is it's going to... Um, take the area of each of these national forest polygons and partition them based on uh, how much is in each of the states. So down here in uh, you know, George Washington, um, George Washington National Forest uh, is mostly in Virginia, but there's a little slivers of it in West Virginia up here. So that part that's in West Virginia will count toward West Virginia's tally and the part in Virginia will count toward Virginia's tally. At least that's what we want. Uh, Monongahela, same thing. Most of it is in West Virginia, but there's these little tiny chunks in... in um... No, I guess it's all in West Virginia. Huh. I did not know that. Okay. So let's, let's, let's take a look at the options we have when we uh, do a summarize within. Okay. So the first option we got to pick is input polygons. Uh, so the input polygons are the polygons that define our par partitions, which in this case is the U.S. state boundaries. Um, you know what? Before we do this, I don't know if this will break, but I always like to, you know, so remember this came from a shape file. Uh, so I'm going to export this to my geodatabase and uh, just call it National Forests, Forest Boundaries, okay? Just export it to my geodatabase. All these uh, spatial processing, spatial analysis tools uh, seem to work more fluidly on data that's in a geodatabase. Um, so then I'll erase, I'll remove that other layer, okay. And it's funny that those got so tiny, it's so weird. Okay, uh, so now let's do summarize within. So our input polygons are the U.S. state boundaries, 
and the uh... oh, hold on a second why can't I see Huh. Oh, crap. <laughs> Does anybody know what happened? It's good. This is a good little test. Does anybody know what just happened? So it looks like when I exported the, uh, the shape file, it deleted everything except for one national forest. Does anybody know why that happened? <laughs> uh, happened because I had that forest selected when I did the export the feature um, class so it only exported what was selected that's actually useful if, uh, if you ever want to export just part of a uh, the data in a, in a layer to a new feature class you can just select what you want and export it uh, so I'm gonna have to do that again um, put that back on Let's delete this and uh, okay so I put the shape file for the national forest back on and uh, let's go into the database and we'll delete that feature class I just made because I'm gonna make it again so I'll go here and you know everything's clear good I haven't don't have anything selected data export features I'm going to export this to national forest oh I can't have spaces forest boundaries there we go now I'll remove this and there we go okay Now, back to summarize within. All right, here we go. Input polygons, US state borders. Input features are in the national forest borders. Okay. Um, summary fields. So um, this, it, it turns out that, um, well, let, let's see what fields we have here that we can summarize. So one of the fields in the um, national parks feature is, is acres. Another field is shape length, and another field is area. Actually, let's get rid of shape length. We don't really need that. Uh, shape area. And the statistic we want to count is the sum. We want to sum up uh, how much of the acres and how, or how much of the area is in each of these input polygons. Uh, and uh, down here, you can. this is going to be redundant in this case, but when you do this, you know, these these fields are just numerical they could be anything it could be like instead of the the acreage in each of these polygons it could be the um, the number of bald eagles in each of these polygons in which case it would uh, when you do this analysis it would partition that total into the the various states at the borders based on the relative size of the polygons in those two states. So if it's like, um, let's see, down here, here's a national forest that's sort of on the border between Oklahoma, Texas, and uh, New Mexico. And it's, um, you know, so if, if I had a feature in my data, uh, in my attribute table for this national park that was like the number of reindeer um, and there was a hundred you'd expect like, you know, just based on this. It looks like 20% uh, that actually looks like a reindeer right there um, Would be in New Mexico and maybe 60% is in Texas and 20% is in Oklahoma So it would, it would divide up that hundred reindeer into those different states based on the relative size of the polygons in each of those states If that makes any sense um but let's do this. We'll, we'll calculate this. Um, it occurs to me now that what we really want is not acres, but a more useful thing would be square square miles. 
and square miles isn't in our data set. Okay, so let's calculate it. So we'll go to our national forest boundaries to the attribute table. And yeah, who knows what this the units are here? Shape area? I don't know what that is. That doesn't look like square miles to me. Um, so let's let's add a field. Close this. go here it is hmm it's not let me edit the attribute table weird. I don't know why it wouldn't let me add it uh, from that view. Um, so I'm going to add a, a field in my attribute table here. I'll call it, uh, let's call it area square miles. And uh, we'll make it We'll make it double point precision. So it can be a, a, a decimal number. And over here. Oh, that's why. The save button is currently disabled due to unsaved edits and one or more maps in this project. I saved my edits. What haven't I saved? Sometimes um, ArcGIS is frustrating in this way. What have I not saved? Um, I'm pretty sure I saved everything. <sighs> You're so annoying. Save edits. Yes. National parks in the states. I don't remember editing that level. No, come back. Ugh. Now let's add this uh, new field. So we're going to call it area square miles. Make it a double format and numerical format. So it displays, let's give it a few decimal places, maybe, I don't know, four, sure. OK. And then save that change. <clears throat> okay, so I created a column, uh, a new field in my attribute table. And what I want to do in this field is I have all these geometries for the various national forests. And I want to uh, get ArcGIS Pro to calculate how big each of those polygons is. So I right click on here. One of the options is calculate geometry. Okay. 
very, very useful. And I'm going to calculate geometry. And the target field is area square miles. And the property I want to calculate is geodesic area. Okay. Um, remember, if I if I count, well, it's not an option here, but plane the area on the the plane of the map, the projection that we're using would not be accurate. But geodesic involves following the curvature of the Earth. And then I get to pick what units I want my area to be in. Uh, so I'm going to do square miles. And the coordinate system isn't going to matter. I'll just use whatever's in the um, current map. Uh, well, it would matter, but uh, I just want to use WGS 1984. And it's working. It's working to calculate the areas of all the national parks. It's got a lot of work to do. When you uh, are doing spatial analysis that involves uh, functions or tools that take a lot of time to process, um, one thing ArcGIS Pro does is you can schedule jobs. So you can um, uh, sort of set up a bunch of jobs to run um, sequentially, uh, a bunch of steps to run sequentially, and then you can just click run and then it does it and you can walk away. but this is almost done. Done, okay. So I have the square miles of each of uh, the size, the area in square miles for each of the national parks. Sorry, national forests. Let's close that. Close that, let's look at the map. All right, so now let's go back and to the summarize within and uh, we want to summarize the national forest boundaries within each state um, national forest boundaries and we'll create it'll create a new output feature class let's give it a name uh, we'll call it uh, national forest in the states, okay, something like that. And now one of the summary fields we have here will be this area square miles. I could do area acres and the other, but that's the only one we really want, area and square miles. We want to calculate the area and square miles of national forests in each of the states. So the statistic that we want to do is we want to sum all these up. And uh, let's let's calculate not square meters. Uh, let's let's add um, square miles as a shape attribute uh, summary as a summary of the uh, the attribute the the shape of these uh, national forests and units of square miles as well. So what this will do is it will it's basically going to do this this operation redundantly since area in square miles is already a feature. Um, we're going to perform the sum operation on that, but while it's running, it's also going to figure out um, on the fly the area of each of these polygons for the national forests that are in each of the states. Um, you can do, we're not going to do this right now, but if uh, let's say there were you know, national forests and there were national forest preserves you could group your answer based on those two different characteristics, those two different classifications using the group field. But we don't have that in this case. Uh, what's missing? Parameter is missing or invalid. Okay. Park area, then 
States. All right, it's working. I don't know why I had the wrong path there for my output feature class. I think I hadn't tried, I tried to put it into something that wasn't a geo database. So it's working. Look, it's got six, you probably can't see that, but it's got 16 steps and it's on step four of 16. Who knows what all those 16 steps are, but I'm sure each one is very important and it's working very hard. I got a pretty fast computer here too. It's uh, um, got six processing cores and a nice beefy GPU. And it's done with step 16 and now it is writing features. There's 200 of them. 200 features. All right, it's done. Let's take a look at the results. Um, we'll put the National Forest boundaries on the top here, but here's my output uh, feature. Um, here's my output layer, and let's take a look at the data. So right-click on this, and let's look at the attribute table. And so I got a row for each state. Well, I got 51 rows. What's the other state? District of Columbia. Yes. Taxation without representation. <laughs> yeah, right. Like DC doesn't have any representation. Um, so that's my MP count still there. Summarize area and square miles. Some area square miles. See, so look at these two numbers and and ideally, they would be exactly the same, but they're not. Uh, and uh, maybe we'll, maybe we'll take a look at that a little bit. Um, but uh, let's let's look at hmm, where's a state where it's got a national? It's got one Pennsylvania. We'll go to Pennsylvania. So Pennsylvania has one national forest right there, Allegheny. And uh, let's open that up. Okay, so Allegheny National Forest. Um, its area in square miles is 1,157.6255 square miles. That was what we calculated using the calculate geometry function. Okay, and uh, let's take a look at the row for Pennsylvania. In, I'll select this. Oh, wrong keyboard. I'm going to keep that selected. Uh, we'll find the row for Pennsylvania in the uh, the output uh, feature class. And so is this Pennsylvania? Yes, Pennsylvania. And I go over here and we'll look at, well, look at that. Um, the sum of the area inside, uh, the sum of national parks area inside Pennsylvania in square miles is 1157.625. Six two five, so those are exactly the same. Um, the only difference is this has one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places showing, and this one's only got four. Um, so why isn't this one exactly the same? And the reason is this: this is a number that's calculated based on the polygons as they're rendered in this data file and those polygons are going to have imperfections they were you know the little piece of the border missing here or there uh, little discrepancies between uh, the way it looks and the way that the land was actually surveyed but they're pretty close they're pretty close all right so oh, feels like a slog today but um um, Monday, we'll look at this a little bit more, and um, you know, one thing you might want to do now is, uh, well, we'll take a look at some other examples to see if these numbers that are being calculated for us make sense, um, and 
then you know we think well what what might you want to do with this this information this data and uh, you know one thing that comes to mind is um, maybe you want to calculate like as a percentage of total land area in each state how much of it is national forest and uh, I don't know, that would be pretty interesting actually I think we will do that on Monday all right all right so have a good weekend and I'll see you guys next week.